Good morning, Cross Point. How are you guys doing this morning? It's a, it's a great day to be alive. It really is, truly. It's a great day to be here. How about if we stand and we begin our worship? Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all this stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way, rises up from an empty grave. Hey, no sinner that he can't say. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life. Missy, you want to come up? Good morning. Is it on? Okay. Oh, my gosh. How can you follow up with that? Like, you guys are <laughs> awesome. Thank you for getting us pumped. Hi. So welcome to Cross Point Alliance Church. I am Missy. I am Kay's assistant or assistant to the youth director here. So I have two events that I'm actually going to talk about. The first one. Ladies' Night Out, next Sunday, August 11th. Come on, ladies, bring your friends. Come out and have a good time. They're going to have some desserts. They're calorie-free um, from, <laughs> from 6 to 6.30 and the Fellowship Hall. We will have bocce ball, cornhole, um, poke, fire pits, if weather permitted. Otherwise, we'll move it inside and we'll still have a good time. Uh, also, I want to talk about our third and last installment of our Crosspoint Children's Fun Event. This will be Wednesday, August 21st at Krauss Park. 
Uh, we will have food at 5.30. Fun and games will start at 6 and to 7.30. Bring a towel for any kids. Any kids of any age are invited. If you are a senior or going to be a senior in high school, come. You'll have fun. The kids will love to see these older kids come and really support this event. Uh, bring a friend, bring a towel, because we are going to be doing, I think, kickball, like water slide kickball. So, yeah. That okay. sounds like a good way for an old guy like me to get hurt. Yeah, well, you can, you can pitch. <laughs> you, can, you can be an ump or help oh, direct some of the younger kids because some of these little. younger kids, they, they kind of get confused of where they're supposed to run. So, and then we'll have Thomas come up and do the ump. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I get the privilege of entering us into a time of giving, which is another form of worship. So uh, we're going to have those who are helping collect the offering come forward right now. And then uh, the worship team will let us know when you can stand. Stay seated. As the you guys know when to stand up. We're kind of busy up here. <laughs> oh, all right. So when, when the trays pass, you can stand and continue worship during, during this time. Let, let's pray and thank God with what he's done in our lives, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to have a place of worship where we can worship in freedom, Lord. And as an expression of that, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity to give back to you what you've given to us. Thank you for your provision and for this place we have this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to be Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed only My orphan heart was given a name, amen. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, my life began. Oh, your grace so free, washes over. Chains, I'm a prisoner no more. Who was a ransom he faithfully bore? He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. That's when death was arrested, my life began. Yeah. 
never free. I have this picture in my mind of, you know, Jesus is in the grave and the demons are all going, hey, 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 we got him now. Oh, he's moving. Imagine he's going to get up and kick all of our butts. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Communion time. Uh, who's doing the communion? Thomas? Thanks, Gary. Good morning, everyone. A blessing to get to come up here and, and share with you in this part of our worship as well. I just want to talk to you a little bit about uh, what communion is, why we do it, and who's welcome to participate. Communion is a time of remembrance, a time that Jesus gave us the command to do because we have the tendency to forget the great things that have happened in our lives and the greatest opportunity that we've had for this life and eternal life is to share that time with Jesus, and that's made possible by the sacrifice that he made on the cross for us. The shedding of his blood, which we represent by the juice that we take during this time. The tearing and breaking of his flesh, which we represent by the crackers or the bread that we give during this time. He wants us to remember what it took to purchase our freedom. And I want to encourage us as a body of believers to exercise that freedom. Coming here on Sunday and even giving your life to Christ for the first time and experiencing that joy that comes from his Holy Spirit dwelling within you is beautiful. But we can fall prey to bondage sometimes. We can let daily sin weigh us down. We can forget that the object is that relationship with Jesus, not just doing the right thing or reading your Bible or saying you checked off that prayer time during your day. It's about knowing him. It's about becoming closer to him. So as you peel back the layers and God says, ah, you've been faithful, here's another layer. I'm going to reveal more of who I am to you that you can sit there in silence and maybe even start crying at the beauty that's revealed to you. It's remembering the moment that made that possible, that's what we're doing this morning with communion. If you're not a member of Cross Point, do not worry about that. If you're a member of the body of Christ, you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you believe that his death and resurrection sealed your ability to spend eternity praising and worshiping God, you are welcome to do this with us. So those who are administering this with me, can you please come up and we'll start passing out the elements. We'll pray, and Gary, while we're taking this time to reflect, you guys are praying. Thank you.
as we're getting the last of the elements passed out. We've had this time of reflection. I'm going to pray and we'll take the elements together. And we'll have a, a basket passed down the center aisle to collect your glasses right after this. And then we'll join in worship again. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that you, you had to take place and were willing to make with your son Jesus' life. The only sacrifice that would make possible our eternal salvation and the retirement of the old blood sacrifice we see in the Old Testament law. We thank you for the privilege of a personal relationship with you where we get to know intimately the creator of the universe. You are so much more than we know and beautiful beyond description. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll take these elements together. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, I'm saving. He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing, man. I stood on this stage 
Night after night, reminding the broken it'll be alright. But right now, oh right now I just can't. It's easy to see when there's nothing to bring me down. But what would I say when I'm held to the flame like I am? Right now I know you lay rolling down on your can Save through the fire with your mind Lord, that you are our chain breaker. You are everything. I just thank you for this time. We just pray for Pastor Tom as he brings a message this morning. We just pray for each and every one of us to, to be close to you, to draw close to you throughout the week, every day. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Check, check. Kids, you want to come out? I get to pray for the kids this morning. What a privilege. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for each and one of these precious kids. We know, Jesus, that you love kids so very much. 
These kids are the, the next generation of warriors for you, Jesus. We just thank you for each and every one of them. We just ask that you would bless them as they go and learn about you. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. One thing that didn't make it in the bulletin because we just found out about it this week is uh, the president of the Christian Missionary Alliance in Mexico is going to be here on uh, September 5th and sharing with us. That's a Thursday. Turn with me in your Bibles, would you, this morning? Exodus chapter 15. H how do you respond to change? We all deal with it all the time, but how do you respond to it? Whether we like it or not, you and I are going to struggle with change all of our lives wrestling with the circumstances that change begins. And when we experience unwanted change, we may feel like, Andy Stanley says, you feel like you're holding on to God even when you feel like God is no longer holding on to you. Mike, a little closer to my mouth. Okay, I'll try to do that. I believe that it, in, in Exodus chapter 15, God engineered the circumstances to teach the Israelites as they were leaving Egypt and coming, going to the promised land to teach them the freedom that God was giving them. We're still doing that, huh? Can I hang it? Well, I hang up my nose. What? Well, let's get our act together here. How am I doing? Don't touch me. Well, maybe we should begin again here. <laughs> I believe that, that God orchestrated the events in the, with the children of Israel for them to learn and to know how to deal with change, to know how to cope with change, to know how to be challenged by the changes in their life. The Apostle Paul wrote about this same idea in 1 Corinthians 10.5, and when he's Referring back to the children of Israel that we're looking at this morning, he's referring back to them and says this. These things, the things that they were going through, these things happened to them as an example, and they were written for our instruction, to teach us. I think Jesus in the New Testament did the same thing. If you study the circumstances around the story of the death of Lazarus and his sister's reaction to his death. Again, it illustrates this, this idea, this feeling that they were holding on to God even when they didn't know if God was holding on to them. I don't like changes. I don't like these things either. 
I don't like the changes, especially that happen to me as I grow older. I still want to do the things I was able to do 10 years ago, 15 years ago, whatever. That I have a difficulty of doing now. How many of you have to ask your wife to help you put on your socks? That's a humbling one, at least for me it is. I want to be able to put on my own socks. I want to be able to get in and out of the car without my back cracking and hurting. I want to run my own snowblower rather than having someone else do it for me now. And I still want to go dumpster diving. <laughs> but now I bring my grandson along so he goes in the dumpster <laughs> and we do it together. So every Saturday morning, he says, Grandpa, we're going? Uh, we're going. Matter of fact, I, have, I got two loads yesterday, two pickup loads. You and I, as followers of Jesus, we're going to meet the challenges of change in a healthy manner. I want us to look at this story of the Israelites as described in Exodus 15. For 430 years, the Israelites were living there in Egypt under the Egypt's authority, under the kind of protective cocoon of Egypt. Just think of the challenge it would be for them to have to leave that familiar, even though it wasn't as good as we'd like it, leave that familiar and go to some place that they only been told about. They didn't know anything about it. Go to this strange country. And that's just the beginning of the things that they faced. Life in Egypt for the Israelites meant from morning to night making bricks. That was their whole job. But it also meant a simple existence. Day after day, they made bricks and more bricks and more bricks. And then they were able to fall off lying in bed. Then they were able to, to leave Egypt. God had worked out the circumstances for them to leave Egypt. And so they left Egypt and went to this hot and dry desert and lived in tents for a long time. How are they going to find water? How are they going to find food? How are they going to deal with their herds in this process? They didn't know. But by faith, they went. They would, have to, would they have to fight along the way? Was there enemies out there that they would have to deal with? They were kind of like a baby bird on the edge of its nest. And the Israelites would have to take that first flight. We're encouraged when Israel praises God for the opening of the Red Sea when they left Egypt. But within three short days, they had forgot all about that and were grumbling and complaining. Verse 22, chapter 15. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea into the desert of Shur. The Shur means a wall. For three days, they travel in the desert without finding water. Day one, all they found was dry holes. Day two, all they found was dry holes. Day three, more dry holes until the, some of the leaders saw some green up ahead. Knowing that that meant water. And so they got hope again. But they reacted pretty poorly. Kind of like us when, when God brings changes in our lives. We're kind of like that uh, the student who flunked his test. He goes to the 
teacher and he says, I don't deserve this F. What's the deal? And the teacher says, I'm sorry, but F was the lowest I could give you. <laughs> and, and we're kind of there sometimes, aren't we? I read about a man who, in a certain church, opened the broom closet and saw five new brooms. He got all upset and grumbled and complained and went to the pastor. He said, who authorized you to buy these new brooms? The pastor helped him to cool down a little bit. Later on, he was asking the treasurer, the pastor was asking the treasurer, what, what was that all about? He seemed to be overreacting. And the treasurer says, oh, I, I understand his reaction. How would you feel if you saw everything that you had given to the church this past year wound up in five brooms? Yeah. <laughs> Criticizing and grumbling about the challenges of life is a normal response. But a faithful follower of Jesus learns how to handle those better and better. When the Israelites reacted against the state of uncertainty that they were in, living out of a suitcase, I suppose they had suitcases then, but they could no longer depend on the Egyptians to feed them and to clothe them and give them work. They had to learn to trust God every day, every day. But they were not learning very well. We can learn a good lesson, I think, from them. The Israelites responded like children who threw a temper, temper, temper tantrum because God didn't give what they want. How many of your parents have ever been to Walmart, brought your little kid? You go, unfortunately, you forget and go by the toy aisle, and all of a sudden, and you said, no, 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 no. And then all of a sudden, ah! you know, then you think everybody else is looking at you. And you're right, they are. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to all of us at different times. I think this passage tells us how we can learn to accept the unpredictable as God's tool help us to grow. Football coach dreams of going out there. Well, I, I, let me put it this way. A soccer coach. I, I, class, class, I coach soccer for my son. I was at, this is interesting, I went to a meeting of all the parents of these soccer kids and I showed up to who was going to be the coach and there was 11 women and me. <laughs> I'd, I'd never played soccer before in my life. I never, but I was chosen. But it's kind of like you as a soccer coach tells the, the team, now when this happens, here's what I want you to do. And he plans it out. And as you and I know, sometimes our plans aren't carried out like we asked them to. Fans and coaches alike know that their teams, when their teams are evenly matched, it's usually the team at the halftime that makes the right kind of adjustments in order to win. Sometimes we have to learn the right kind of adjust adjustments in order to learn and to continue to learn. Three survivor guidelines. Number one, if the tribe votes you out, demand a recount. When confronted with bugs, you can't beat them, eat them. And thirdly, when fear takes over, call for the equalizer. Now, that was a, supposed to be funny. It wasn't very good, but... Here, three survivor 
for us, I hope they're helpful to you. Number one, remember, 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 God provides for our needs. Most of us react neg negatively toward change because we're convinced that sometimes God has gone to sleep, that he's taken the day off. We've prayed, nothing's happened. I think it's important to think about this. In spite of Israel's grumbling, God still met their needs. Aren't you grateful for that? Aren't you grateful that God is still meeting your needs even though you're complaining and grumbling? God met their physical needs. When they couldn't drink waters at Ma, God made the water sweet. When they cried out for good old food from Egypt, God gives them manna. Remember, G. Campbell Morgan said this, what we do in a crisis always depends upon whether we see the difficulties in light of God or God in the shadow of our difficulties. You're never going to see God in your changes, in your dry holes, unless by faith you trust that he's still working for you and in you. God wants you to trust him when life doesn't go as you thought it should or would. Just as a aside, on Tuesday we leave for um, Mayo Clinic. My daughter has five tumors in her head and they have to go in now and take out one of them because it's pressing against her optic nerve on her left eye. So we have to put this thing into practice, don't we? All the time. But Ron, as I've shared this with you, he pray for us as well. Dependence upon God, dependence upon God's provision. Dependence upon God's provision is something, and again, something we don't, it doesn't mean that the, the moment you become a Christian, you, you've got it all together. It means that you're starting to learn this process. All too often we rely upon our own wisdom and our own abilities and our own resources when we come up against the issue. We take for granted the provision of God. We take for granted that he's supposed to be there. Sometimes we don't feel like it. How many of you have woken up in the morning and your clock is frozen in time? You know, I've got one of those digital ones and it does this thing, you know. A storm or a tornado hits and knocks the power lines down to the ground. Lights and furnaces don't work. No electricity. It's at that point that we recognize our dependence on electricity. And it's those times that God brings us to a dry hole that we learn to depend upon God's provision. Our dependency upon God, the air we breathe, the energy to laugh, the ability to work are all gifts that God has given us. Someone who says that you can never know the exact nature of a challenge of change, but you can always be preparing for it. I think sometimes we're, we're caught off guard. Well, this isn't supposed to happen. I'm, I'm, I'm reading my Bible every day. I'm praying every day. I'm going to church even when the pastor isn't there. And, and all of a sudden we're, we're upset because something has happened. That's life. And it's through those experiences that we learn to trust. The Israelites collected manna, something like popcorn, didn't they? They, they collected popcorn every day. Enough food for every day, except on Saturdays or Fridays, they were to collect twice as much so that on the Sabbath they had enough to eat without going out and collecting. Jesus, in teaching his disciples how to pray, said, I think very specifically this, give us this day our daily bread. Not 
monthly, not weekly, not yearly, but our daily bread. Part of this growth process that God has got us under is that God wants us to live with the challenges of change by learning to follow Jesus one day at a time. Thirdly, life includes both dry holes and fresh springs. So get used to it. Bad things are going to happen. Difficult things are going to happen. And again, that doesn't mean you're not walking with Christ. It just means that's the normal thing in this life. Verse 27. Then they came to Elam, and there were 12 springs, 70 palm trees, and they camped there near the water. You ever wonder why 12 springs and 70 palms? What's that all about? They were only six miles about from when they were at Mara. Mara was that grumbling and complaining, went right over the sand dunes, only six miles away. Twelve springs and 70 palm trees. Do you know how many tribes there were in the children of Israel? Twelve. One spring for every tribe. Do you know how many leaders there were? Seventy. One spring for every tribe and one palm tree for every leader. How many elders and leaders do we have? A lot of them. Pray for them. But the Christian life includes both dry holes and fresh springs, challenges. And so Paul, in writing to the Corinthians, who were discouraged about what was going on and what was going on to him, the things that he was having to deal with. And he writes to them and says this in 2 Corinthians 4.16. So we're not giving up. Some of them were thinking we should. He writes back and says, we're not giving up. How could we? Even though on the outside it looks like things are falling apart on us, on the inside where God is making new life, Not a day goes by without its unfolding grace. Not a day goes by without its unfolding grace. I haven't heard your story, what you're going through, or have gone through, or may be going through. But I have, to a small degree, experienced painful times in my life about change. But I've walked with many people who have gone through tremendous changes and ex- grueling experiences in their life. And they didn't get the miracle they were hoping for and prayed for. But they still believe because they know that others have. And they believe because some have Miracles, they were confident to believe that there are more miracles to come. In your bulletin and up here, I've seen that cartoon years ago and I thought, someday I'm going to find a sermon where I can use that. (laughs) Today's the day. Look close. But the idea is never give up. Never give up. All of those changes and dry holes come. He encourages us so we never give up. Let's pray. Father, replace my resistance to unwanted change into a willingness and the trust that you're in it with me. Help me to accept the many changes that have been and will continue to be a part of our lives as we follow you, as we walk with you. Remind us that 
you are carrying us even when we don't think we can take another step. In Jesus' name I pray. See you again.